to where we'll say, you know what, I'm going to run away from whatever it is that God has called me to do. And the Lord dealt with me this week. So, um, Friday, Friday night, I went to go see The Lion King. The Nelsons there, we were, I saw them and we were talking for a minute, but I went in and when I went to go see the movie, there's a scene, now you all seen the original yeah. Lion King, and so you know, the new one, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of the original. That's just yeah. okay. I like the new one, but I'm a fan of the original. But there's something in there that, that really stuck out to me. When Simba ran away from the position he was supposed to be in, somebody else, Scar, took position. But while he was reigning as king, Everything that was connected to Simba suffered. Everything that was connected to him had, had challenges. Not only that, there were things that were also connected to him that died. And while I'm sitting in the movie eating my uh, chicken tenders and fries and drinking my Pepsi, I know that's not healthy, but I was, you know, while I was in there doing it, the Lord spoke to me and he said, when you don't take position, the position I've given you, everything around you will suffer. When you don't take the position and stand in the, I don't care what has happened, when you do not take position, everything connected to you will suffer. And I had to say, Lord, forgive me. I had to say, Lord, forgive me. God, forgive me. Do you not know that people with great failures have, are, are great victors? Those with great failures are great victors. Not only that, they are great winners. Great winners. Else, thank you, God, for just dropping that in my in my head. Sometimes people will run you away from the position you're supposed to be in. Ain't it something how? Isn't it something how? I gotta go back to the movie. I don't know why I'm talking about Lion King, but it's something that Scar used or or or, or tricked or used something to get him out of position because it was something he wanted. You gotta be careful that there are some people who want your spot. Some people want, and they will do whatever they need to do to get your spot. But how many of you know that God crafted and designed that place specifically for you? And I don't care who tries to step in it, who tries to walk in it, it's not effective until you step in it. Just like David, when David was king, David got anointed to be king when he was a kid, but then God told him to go back and, and, and attend the sheep, right? But what was happening was, though he was already king, it was not time for him to step into position. And when it was time for him to step into position, when he stepped in, then all of a sudden, that's when they brought the glory, the ark of the covenant back in. They are your position and your spot is designed and crafted just for you. That ain't even been my message. I just had to just had to just share that with y'all. God is moving in this place. I I I, 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 uh, I called my pastor, uh, Pastor Russell, and I told Pastor Russell, you know, we were talking and, and we were out of town uh, last weekend and we were just talking. And then I, I had a, I talked to uh, my former pastor. I, I texted him and I said, Pastor, I said I just need you to just pray for me and. Um, I said this message, I said, I just need you to pray for me. 
to deliver this message, and he texts me back instantly. Now, normally it takes him about a couple of days before I hear from him, but he texts me back instantly. He said, you have already lived out what you have to preach. Just flow. I said, wow. <laughs> now, here's the thing. I'm a songwriter and I'm a minister. Both of them when you write songs and you preach messages, you have to live what you preach and what you write. I, I got a song one time that said, Rescue Me, and I was like, I don't want, I don't want to go to whatever this is going to be. Don't you rescue me? I don't want to do that. There are some things that we, we go through, and sometimes we feel that we're going through it for us, or it's a, or it's a challenge, or it's a, a punishment, or something that God is doing. And sometimes God is saying, no, I'm just using you as an example to show you that I am still in the miracle working business. It's not for you, it's for somebody else. So you go through so somebody else can, can, can see the work and the hand of God. Amen. All right, let's, let's, let's get into this. I, I plan not to be long because there, I, I do have an assignment that the Lord has given me to do today, and I'm going to be obedient to that. Amen? Amen. I found that, um, you know, we say fear is the opposite of faith, but really what is the opposite of faith is unbelief. It is unbelief. That is the opposite of faith because when you don't believe, faith is not present. Amen. Amen. Uh, I want you to go to Hosea, the sixth chapter, and we're going to read the first and the second verse, verses one and two. And if you can, can you stand for the word? Uh, In, I'm just going to read uh, just, just this and it says this it says come let us return to the Lord he has torn us to pieces but he will heal us somebody say he will heal us he has injured us but he will bind up our wounds after two days he will revive us on the third day he will restore us that we may live in his presence. Amen. Tell your neighbor, this is what we're going to talk about today. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor. Neighbor. We are going through surgery. Going through surgery. All right, you can take a seat. You can take this seat. Tell your neighbor, we're going through surgery. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Uh, I was, I, I was driving, I was driving down the highway and when I started, uh, 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 you know, I was driving, I was coming from Rock Island, I was with Pastor Russell, he preached last Sunday, so I was with him and, and uh, I was driving back and again, as I told you, I was struggling with, you know, preaching the message and I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, while I was driving, I said, if you want me to speak, I said, you got to give me a sign, you got to tell me something, let me know something. Let me know what it is that you really want me to know. How many of us have ever been there before? You know, we try to throw that out like, you know, because we really don't want to do it, so we, we put it off on God like that. And as I was driving, there's an old song that I, I listened to back in the day. And it, it popped in my head instantly, right when I said, this is what the lyrics say. The lyrics say this. It says, Lord, I've messed up, made mistakes in my day. But I'm grateful you didn't throw me away. You said you'd keep on working till you see a return on the investment you made in me. I've done things I'm ashamed to tell you. Public success, but a private failure. I need you to work on my heart. So my life in the light won't reverse in the dark. Then it says, so I cry, yes. I admit I need, I need you to do surgery on me. It's a friend of mine, it's a friend and a, a friend, an acquaintance of mine who, who sings a song he asked me and he wrote the song. And it just popped in my head. 
All of us at some point in our life has needed God to do surgery on us. Yeah. Talking spiritual surgery, amen? Yeah. Whether we're surgery on our mouth because we can't control what we say out of it. Some of us have had surgery on our minds because the mentality, we have that mentality that what you do to me, I'm going to do ten times worse to you. Uh, uh, in this text, Israel here in, in Hosea, Israel is broken and feeling as if God was the one wounding them. He was the one, uh, they felt like he was the one cutting them and hurting them. What God was doing is performing surgery on them. Mm. Sometimes the pain and the hurt of, of experience that we experience isn't a punishment, but it's a part of the process to heal. Yes, yes. Mm. So, a couple of points I want to talk about with surgery. Now, when you go into surgery, the first thing they have you to do, this is my first point, the first thing they have you do is remove everything and you gotta come naked and vulnerable. <laughs> so when surgery is about to take place, the preparation that takes place, normally they tell you to, uh, to arrive a couple of hours early, right? To get registered, uh, you go through medical history, and they want to make sure you don't, you know, if you're taking any medicine. Yeah. And then the nurse will tell you to change out of your clothes and put on a gown. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. When yeah. surgery takes place, the first thing they tell you to do is remove everything. And, 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 and here's the thing. Same thing when it, when it is with God. When you come to God, the first thing in coming to God is you've got to come to him vulnerable and naked. You've got to come to him saying, God, open. You have to be open. You've got to remove every mask. You gotta remove everything. When Adam and Eve was in the garden, when Jesus said, where are you? They were sitting, they had taken leaves and tried to cover themselves up because they were hiding because of sin that came in, right? Right? Before that, they were walking around, no clothes on, they were very, they were pure in mind, everything was all good. They had no worries, they had no cares, and they were free in God. It was not until sin came into place that they hid themselves. What happens is, what happens is, we come to God, but we're not 100 with God. And he's an all-knowing God. So he knew before you was coming to him what it really was. He just wanted to see, would you really give me and be, be completely open with me? He asked Adam, and he asked Adam, and then when they went, he said, where are you? Wasn't that he didn't know where they were. It wasn't that he knew where they were, but he was talking, something has happened, something has come between us. Uh, so, uh, you, 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 you've got to come before him naked and, 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 and vulnerable and, 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 um, and, and give him everything. The reason they tell you to remove off all the stuff is because you, you, you can't, if I go to the doctor, and I tell the doctor, hey, I need you to heal this wound I got, but I got my hand over the wound. How can he properly diagnose me when I'm hiding what's going on? There's no way that he could pop, pro uh, properly diagnose or even know what to do if I'm covering up what it is that I need him to heal. Same thing with God. We come before him and we only tell him so much. And most times what it is is God wants to get us to a place to where we can be humble before him. Not man. I want to say that again. I want to say that again. Some of us, y'all going to your moms, your auntie, your cousins, you, you know, all of your friend, the person, your co-worker, and you going to all this and God is standing there talking about, well, what about me? <laughs> says he was there all the time, waiting patiently in line. <laughs> he was there all the time. Huh. That means he's sitting back 
waiting for you to just go through all of your options. And once you go through all of your options, he's sitting there going, okay, and I, I've been, just been waiting for you. And at that point, you're at your knees in front of him. So, God wants us, wants us to pour our hearts out to him. And if we do pour our hearts out, he will open us, expose our heart. Uh, and he doesn't do it to hurt us, but he does it to heal us and to transform us. Here's the next point. 